Welcome back to the 5-Minute Football Fix. I'm Stephen Miranda. And I'm Jeff Ellis, and welcome to August 3rd, 2011. It's Wednesday. Today, we're talking about Tim Tebow versus Kyle Orton. And we're talking about some big old downsides to the lockout. And a new segment, Twitter Talk, with primetime <laughs> Deion Sanders and... Mr. Michael Finley. Prime time. All right, we'll get to prime time in a minute, but right now, Jeffrey, the Denver Broncos don't know who they're playing at quarterback. Kyle Orton, Tim Tebow, tell me about it. They know exactly whom they're playing at quarterback, Stephen. They know exactly who it is. They do. Okay, who is it? It's Kyle Orton. Of course it's it is. It's the guy it should have been all along. However, they were hoping that they could move forward with the Tim Tebow era. They were hoping that they could maybe get some good stuff if they traded him to the Miami Dolphins, and the Miami Dolphins weren't biting on the asking price. And as a result, they've done what any logical organization would do, and they have kept Mr. Orton in-house and made him the anointed number one quarterback. Miami is, is welcome at any point to meet the asking price. Yeah. However, I really admire what John Elway is doing and John Fox here in Denver. They're doing fantastically, and they have said – Let's take the cult of Tebow and let's turn it down from 11 just a little bit, okay? <laughs> the cult of Tebow. Well, I, Was it at 11? Well, Stephen, that's what I call it. If, if you just go out and you search, who sold the most jerseys in the NFL last year, Stephen? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. And what had he done by the time he had sold more jerseys? Nothing. Nothing. Thank you. So I, I call it a cult of Tebow because, look, Tim Tebow, we had a chance to meet him in London last year. Very likable young man. A very strong, dominating presence. A great leader. He's got a very unorthodox lefty delivery style from down low that I don't think is ready for the NFL yet. He, w What he was best at is what how they utilized him last year. They brought him in in short yardage situations. The fact is, though, when they brought him in as a starter at the end of last season for three games, he played some decent football. But uh, I don't think that the coaches are liking what they're seeing right now in Denver. And, and it's definitely, if, if you ask me, do I want Tim Tebow to start or do I want Kyle Lauren to start? I'm starting Orton. I'm starting Kyle Orton, too. And I just think that I call it the cult of Tebow because he's so liked. And he's liked for right reasons. My son has a huge issue with him being liked for not doing much but being a good guy and having endorsements and things. He's but that's not the kid's fault, okay? All right. It's not on the kid. And but so as we're not starting him. We're not starting him. Kyle Orton starting, and that's how it should be. Go get All him, right. Denver Broncos. Now, Jeffrey, right now I want to talk about some of the downside to this lockout that happened. Um, and We today, haven't had enough downsides already well, just with four and a half months of How about anguish. injury and fatigue and just just stuff getting on players? This morning at this morning's practice in Philadelphia, the Eagles defensive tackle Mike Peterson suffered a seizure, Jeff. Uh, he dropped to the ground between plays at practice, and he began violently shaking. Now, he was immediately tended to by trainer Rick Burkholder and his staff, and Burkholder said they don't want to speculate. Uh, he said it could be anything. We don't even want to speculate what might have happened. Uh, the Daily uh, Philadelphia Daily News is reporting that Peterson was being treated for dehydration. Um, the Baltimore Ravens late last week, 9 to 10 players cramping up, muscle problems, fatigue issues. Is that because they didn't have any time working out before this, or, or is it just the weather? You know, the weather, we have some unprecedented heat in the middle of America right now, where I heard on CBS News this morning that high school footballers in the Dallas area are being weighed in before practice and then weighed out after practice to make sure they haven't lost too much weight, and if they have, then they're actually giving them a day off the next day. So I don't know what it is, but with the big men, you need to be especially careful. We do have seizure problems that happen, especially with the yep. big men every yep. offseason. So I wouldn't put it to the lockout per se yet necessarily. We well, need a little bit more let's time. Let's see to how find the out. rest of training camp plays out. Now, Jeffrey, time for Twitter Talk. Twitter Talk, everyone's favorite new segment. All right. Well, this is uh, Green Bay Packers tight end, Jermichael Finley. Jermichael says, Man, I wish we had the damn Eagles on the schedule. All this dream team talk is killing me. I don't know if I want to face those guys. However, that's one terrifying Whatever. eagle. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I agree with him. The dream team talk is a little silly, but you know what the media does? The media has to make stories. Yes, they, they're making a big story. And when but you go I'm and sign Finley. everybody and their mother to <laughs> contracts, remember, you will still be signed before the end of this week and in camp. Um, then, uh, but Hall of Famer Deion Sanders, this I love this. One. He says, they tell me Prime is on NFL Network tonight. One hour special? 
My highlights are longer than The Godfather. How do you make it one hour? Exactly. How do you make prime time fit in a single hour? We don't know either, Prime. We love you, and congratulations on the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. More Hall of Fame stuff coming tomorrow, but that's all the time we got. Five-minute football fix. Jeff Ellis. And Stephen Miranda. Out. Out.